Hi guys, welcome to my channel Cardiologist. Previously, I spoke about the object snap modes, which are used basically to create accurate drawing and to snap into a specific location on any object in order to apply any of the draw or modify tool. In this video, I will cover the last topics in this course. I will talk about polar tracking, dynamic input, plug creation, and dimensioning. Then you will be ready to start exercising. So don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the alert button to view my latest. Polar tracking. Polar tracking restricts the cursor movement to specific angles. When you turn it on either by clicking the tab from the status bar or by pressing F10 from the keyboard, the ortho mode will turn off automatically where you can't have them both activated. You can use polar tracking to display temporary alignment paths defined by angles. You specify which might ease drawing or modifying your object. Let's see how polar tracking works in this example. Click on the little arrow of polar tracking and choose the angle increment to be by 90 degrees. Activate line command and press anywhere to specify the first point. When you move the cursor left or right horizontally, we can see an alignment path at zero degrees inclination. I will draw a line through this path and then move the cursor clockwise until I see the 90 degrees path to snap at and draw the second line. Then I will keep moving the cursor till I see the 180 degree path to snap at and draw another line. You can repeat the same at 270 degrees and then back to the zero degree again. Let's repeat line drawing using different polar angle this time. I will choose 15 angle increments. Activate line command and draw 20 millimeter line through zero degree angle. Move the cursor till you snap the 15 degree angle path and draw another 20 millimeter line. Repeat the same at 30 degrees and 45 degrees and any 15 degree angle increment path. Personally, I find polar tracking a very useful tool when drawing patterns like this one and this one, beside many other drawings. Dynamic input. This tool provides a command interface near the cursor in the drawing area. Click on the dynamic input tab from the status bar to activate it or press F12 to turn it on. If you can't see the dynamic input in the status bar, go to customization tab and from the menu, check dynamic input. If you want to draw a rectangle, this tool will allow you to see and specify the size of the rectangle width and length the same time you draw through this tool tab. Just type 100 mm to specify the length and press tab to specify the width, 40 mm and hit enter. Make sure that both dynamic input and polar tracking tabs are turned on and activate line command. Specify the length to be 100 mm and press tab to lock the length and then choose any angle you want. Let's say 75 degrees and hit enter. Press enter again to end the command. The dynamic input functions same as the command line in terms of telling you what to do next when you activate the tool, but it cannot replace the command line in many cases. Block creation. Creating a block in AutoCAD is about combining several objects under one specific name and base point. Let's explore block creation, modify and insert through this example. First, I will draw a chair top of you using rectangle command. I will draw a rectangle of 35 by 35 cm for the seating area. Another rectangle for the back 35 by 5 cm and 28 by 3 cm rectangle on the sides for the chair hands.
To create a block, first select all objects you want to combine together. Then from the block panel choose create. Now type the name of the block you want to create, chair. And then pick the block base point. I will choose this rectangle middle point to be the chair base point. Then press OK. Now if you select the chair, you would notice that it's selected as one object that can be moved around from the base point I chose. If you delete the block, you can insert it back in the drawing area through insert tab from a block panel. Click on insert to display all blocks you created. Click on chair, then specify insertion point. You can insert the same block as many times as you want. If you want to modify one block, the changes you make will be applied to all. Select the block and click on edit tool. Make sure your block is selected in the edit block definition and click OK to start editing. I will draw cross lines in this rectangle. Then click on close block editor. You can choose either to save the changes you made or to discard them. As you can see the cross lines I drew were added to all blocks of same definition. Dimensioning in order to explore the dimension tools available in AutoCAD, I drew these rectangles and circles to show you guys how to do the dimensioning. In the annotation tab, click on this letter arrow to display dimension options. To dimension your drawing horizontally or vertically, choose linear. Specify the first extension line at this endpoint and second extension line at this endpoint. Then specify the dimension location anywhere close to the object. There are two things you need to bear in mind. First, some of the OSNAP modes that we spoke about before must be activated in order to do precise dimensioning. The second thing, you might not be able to see the dimension clearly at first. But this is something you can control through Dimension Style Manager. Click on Annotation and choose dimension style or type D and hit enter from the keyboard to open this window. Click on modify. I want you guys to remember these changes where you might need to apply them in most of your drawings. In the line tab, increase baseline spacing to 3.5. Type 1, 4, extend by on dimension lines and offset from origin. In the symbols and arrows tab, Increase arrow size to 2.5 and breaking size to 1.5. In the text tab, increase text height to 2.5 and offset from dimension line to 1.5. Make sure in the text placement field, vertical is set to above and horizontal is set to centered. And check aligned with dimension line. Skip the Fit tab for now. Just remember that it has an important rule in dimensioning. We will check it out later. In the primary units, set the precision to zero for linear dimensions and the same for angular dimensions. Then click OK and close. The dimension now might look better than before, but not as clear as you want it to be. You can simply adjust it now from the Fit tab we skipped before. Type D and hit Enter or Space to access the Dimension Style Manager again. Click on Modify and go to Fit tab. All you have to do now is to change the scale. I will try 5 and recheck if the dimension text and arrows are as clear as it should be. Yeah, that seems OK. Activate the Linear tool again from Annotation to dimension the distance between these rectangles. Be sure that all of your dimensions are aligned together on the same level for better appearance. Hit Space to activate the tool again 
and dimension this rectangle. Now we will dimension this side, but this time using the linear tool shortcut DLI and hit enter. Since you want to continue dimensioning this side, type DIMC for dimension continue, then click on this endpoint and this endpoint. Then press escape to end dimensioning. Now let's explore another type of dimensioning called aligned dimension. Click on this endpoint and this endpoint to find the length. Repeat the same command using the shortcut DAL to find this length. If you want to do angle dimension, Choose angular, then specify first and second lines to find the angle. Repeat the command again using the shortcut DIMANG. To find the radius of this inner circle, choose radius, then just click on the circle boundary. Repeat the command using the shortcut DIMR to measure the outer circle radius. If you want the radius dimension to extend to the center of the circle, go to Dimension Style Manager, click on Modify, and go to Fit Tab. In the Fine Tuning field, check Draw Dimension Line between External Line. To find the diameter of the inner line, choose diameter, then just click on the circle boundary. Repeat the command using the shortcut DIMD to measure the outer circle diameter. This video covered the previous remaining topics I presented to you guys in the first tutorial. I spoke about polar tracking dynamic input, block creation, and dimensioning. By now you should be familiar with all necessary commands to create and modify any 2D drawing despite the complexity. All you need now is to practice drafting in AutoCAD, so you become better and faster. And for that purpose, I will be providing many exercises that enhance your skills in the software. Feel free to go through any of the 6 tutorials to revise the course contents in case you are still not familiar with what's covered so far. If you have any question, you can write for me in the command bar below and I will be sure to answer you as soon as possible. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the alert button to stay updated.